when the sand fell over, man. Why? Because it had no, it had no, no, no foundation, man. But he that the wise man built his his house upon the rock, man. Okay. Because the winds and the rains is coming. What is that? That's the temptations, man. You know. But if you're built upon Yahweh Shai, okay. Then, um, you know, when the wind, winds and rain came, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna fall over, man. You know. And really, if you wanna go a little bit deeper, it's really been that that house on the rock is the house of David, man. All right. Because Peter, what did he say to him? Upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now if you can bury it in the spirit, who is Peter, man? You know? That's deep, man. It's all about the house of David, man. It's all about being in that rock, man. You know? That's some serious stuff there, man. You know? Uh, this is First John 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Yeah, man. So you gotta get to the point, you know, where you're, you're fully disengaged, disconnected from this world, man. You know, you know, in the world, but not of the world, as the scripture says, man. Because if you still got lusts of the world and of the flesh, you can't fully connect to to um, to the scriptures, man, to the truth. And the Bible says that no man can serve two masters. Okay, you're either gonna love one and hate the other, man. You know, so you may be playing the fence. You think, oh yeah, well, I still love this, but I love the Lord. It's gonna come a time where <laughs> if the, if you don't make your mind up, which is all through the spirit anyway, you're gonna you're gonna go either way, man. But most likely you're gonna go for the world. You know. So the, the, read that last bit. For, the lust of the, yeah. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Yeah. And the pride of life yeah. is not of the Father, but it is of the world. So you see, either you're going to be of the Father, or you're going to be of the world. You know, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Yeah, go and the world passeth away, <coughs> and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. Yeah, man. So basically, the things of the world is gonna perish, man. You know, the cars and you know all of these fancy stuff. But the, the, word, the word of the Father will last forever, man. Okay. Ties back into what we were speaking about earlier about the everlasting kingdom. Man. You know. But I still, you got back to one. You go and get into that. You know. You got a piece of yeah on the on the seat. Matthew's thirteen. Start at, start at 19 and when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that, that which was sown in his heart yeah, man. this is he which received seed by the wayside verse 20 hold on there everything Thanks, hold, every, everything's spiritual man. Man. for every everything in the flesh there's a spiritual counterpart man you know, everything. There's a spiritual counterpart to everything, man. And the things of the spirit are more powerful than the things of the flesh. Man. Right. Okay? People thinking because they can throw a blow or something and see a man fall down, all right, or shoot a man's head off, they think that that's, that's sick. They think that that's powerful. No, man. The things of the spirit transcend all of that, man. Right. Okay? It, it, it has to go down in the spirit first before it goes down in the flesh. Right. That proves it's more powerful, man. Damn. So when, when the word came, all right, and the, and the wicked one came, all right, in the flesh that, that might be someone bucking up against it. Oh yeah, but you know, I, I don't like that guy last week, the Christian man. But before it happened in the flesh, that's the spirit man. That's the evil one coming, you know. Go on, read it, verse 20. <coughs> but he that received the seed into the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and on with joy receiveth it. Verse 21, yet he have no root in himself, yeah, man. but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Yeah, so all these guys, yeah, I'm an Israelite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come, Yashorana, all that nonsense, man. You know, Khan and all that stuff, man. Them, them armband Israelites, synchronized garments and all that stuff, man. You know, 
Really so you're the devil and Okay. That's them them guys that will last two months, three months, four months. It might even last a year. But guess what? The root. Alright? See that's that's the spirit man. The rock. Okay? That rock in the word kafar, that rock in, in Hebrew. Kafar means that rock man. What was it wasn't it rooted man? See when you come in the truth, you gotta be rooted. Alright? And it takes a while for that root to come through the ground and to see the flower or to see the fruit thereof, man. All right? All those guys that come in and then all of a sudden you're seeing their tree. How did, where did you grow? Where the hell did you grow, man? Like a tree, you plant that tree, you plant that seed, right? Like the oak tree, a very small seed. It takes a long time for it to grow, but then when it comes up out of the ground, you see that big, beautiful tree. That's somebody that's rooted, man. They take time to learn, they take time to listen, they take time to grow, okay? And then when the spirit starts dealing with them, then you see the fruit, man. But it's always them guys, they're on the scene for two months, and they're the biggest teacher in Israel, man. You know, they, 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 they start teaching the apostles, they start saying, this is the correct thing. That's the, that's the seed on the, that fell on the stony ground, man. Because when something happens, like they, the police confront them or it gets hard, then they're gone, man. You know? They ain't got no root, man. Keep reading. You got another piece of it? Yeah. Alright, yeah. 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 bring that and then go back to that. It's Colossians 2 and 6. As ye have therefore received Mashayak, Yahweh the Lord, so ye walk ye in him. Verse 7, rooted and built up in him. Rooted and built up, man. You know? A lot of guys come in and just want to be built up, man. You know? They get the word and they think they're built up, man. You know? And that's the spirit. That's, that's how I keep talking about it. I come from that background, but martial arts, man. When you get to the black belt, which is like, now you know everything, that's when they say to you, now, you've got to this level, now you're a beginner. That, that fucks with your head, man. You've gone through white belt, yellow belt, green belt, all of these brown belt for years and years and years and then now you get to the level of black belt. Yeah, I've made it. And then a the guy says to you, now you're a beginner. That messes with your head. It's the same thing with the truth, man. You come in, you come in, you come in because people think that Lord deals with them straight away. No, 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 no. It says in the Apocrypha that um, Sophia, wisdom will try a man. Alright? Wisdom's gonna mess with you. It's gonna, it's gonna get hard. And if you can endure through the spirit, then it starts to deal with you, man. Yeah. Same with same with this truth, man. You know? So you gotta be rooted and built up in your house shy. And that doesn't come instantly, that takes a while, man. God. As he have been taught, abounding there in with thanksgiving. Yeah, abounding therein, meaning that's that's that discipline, man. This is what you've been taught. Can you stick to it, man? Can you bear it? Can you actually understand it? Then you can teach it, man. You know? Because guys come in, they hear something, oh yeah, I can't get that. And then they, they go on their own vain wisdom and have a new breakdown for it, man. They're not abounding in the truth. Which proves that they were not rooted and built up in Yahweh Shah. This is back to Matthew 13 and 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the words and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful yes yeah man like, like the guy um uh the business of the world man he wanted to follow the lord and he said basically let me go and bury my father first man you know and, and Yahushua said let the dead bury the dead man and the guy was sorrowful and he couldn't take that man you know even like uh, most of the disciples, a lot of them were fishermen. That's a, that was a lucrative business. You were doing all right if you were a fisherman, you know? Okay? It, it was looked at as a low profession, but it was still very... You could make a lot of money from that, man. When Yahweh Shai said to them, drop your nets, come follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. You know, he didn't say how uh, they started, you know, Peter and Andrew, oh, you know, but you think we should, though? He said instantly, man. Straight away, they dropped their nets and followed him, man. You know? They're only looking for people to dilly dally and debate if, if you should follow him. Like if you ain't down with me, you ain't down with me, man. Simple as, you know. 
But that, that proves that it's the Lord that chooses you, man. Because that's a hard thing to do, you know. Well, Matthew's 13 and 23. But he that receives seed in the good ground is he that heareth the words and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and yeah, bringeth forth. That word hear, shamai, which means to hear and understand, man. It, you know. That's why in the scriptures, where a lot of the time in the Torah, it will say, Hear, O Israel, Shema Yesha Allah, which means to listen and understand, man. You know, and that's the spirit. You know, Arya was saying before we started camp that Apostle Baba always says that, you know, when you come in the truth, it's best to be quiet, man. It's better when you first come in just to be quiet and just to listen, man. You know, that's good ground, man. You know, good ground is a guy that will come. He might not get it, he'll be like, he asks a sincere question, you know, he prays about it, he studies it, the spirit gives it to him, and he continues to listen, man. That's that good ground, when the seed falls on it, man. You know, keep going. He heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Yeah, man, so we go from coming up, however we got the truth, hearing it the first time, we listen, Okay, we, we, we take the seed of the word, it grows, and then we now become teachers, man. And then we do the same thing to people that are gonna be good ground, man. You know? That's why Yahweh said, I will make you fishers of men. Okay? They were disciples, which means to be um, under discipline, you know? Okay? Students, okay? In the Hebrew, I believe the word is Tamadamiyam, which means disciple or student. Okay, you learn, you watch your master, you, you, you know, and then you get it, and then you go and teach, man. You know? So you got to be good ground, man. Well, that's the part of man. You don't have to go to Matthew 7.24. Yeah, yeah, read that quickly. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier. That's heavy. Now, this is Matthew 7 and 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, will I liken, unto, liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Verse 25, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Yeah, man. Okay, the, the rock, and it says the wise man. Okay. To come into this truth, the Lord, Sophia, man, you, you get that initial dose of, of, of uh, Sophia. Like when you see a woman, right? You see a woman on the street and you glimpse her and it's like, ooh, she, she, she's hot, man, she's fine, she's buff, you know? And then you get a glimpse and then you, you speak to her, and most times they ain't really on it, they're like, oh yeah, like, you ain't serious, man. And you, you, you talk to them more, 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 and you get to the point where you get their number, man. Right? You give them a text, you give them a call. And she still ain't on it like she's like, because she's still wary about you, man, you know? And then the more you do with her, the more you prove yourself, she opens up to you. And you go on a date, you go on a second, a, a third or fourth date or whatever, you know, go to the movies, you chill. Next thing you know, that's your woman, man. It's the same thing with Sophia. Sophia ain't gonna just open herself up to you like, okay, yeah. Because guess what? Sophia's not a hoe, man. That's right. You know? Sophia's not a hoe. She ain't just gonna spread her legs and let you de delve right in, man. You know? She's gonna test you. That's what the scripture says. Wisdom will test a man. You know, but you gotta be wise, you gotta be patient, man, to understand and see how to work with you. And then when wisdom opens herself up to you, you, you learn, man, you become wise. Go on. This is verse 24. Say so verse 25. And the rain this. Uh, take time. Verse 26 And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like unto a foolish man, yeah, man. which built his house upon the sand. Yeah, That's people good. Uh, and you know what I say to Esau? Let Esau do that, man. It's his kingdom, man. You know, he can do that. Read that again, read that again. Verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man. Yeah, a foolish man. Which built his house upon the sand. Yeah, I'm gonna build my house upon, 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 upon some other philosophy, man. Upon my own wisdom, you know. Go on. 
Verse 27, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. So tempta um, temptation came, evil came, bad times came, man. you know? And it was beaten upon that pop, 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 you know? And the house is like a hurricane, you know, back in the Caribbean, you know, they have them, them hurricanes and that, and they used to call them, them shack houses, them wooden houses, man, upon them, them sticks and that. It's one of them houses that after the hurricane passed, flattened, man, gone. But then you got the house that's, you know, got the, the, the veranda and the concrete and them thing there. Yeah. Them houses were lost, man. But the little wooden houses and that, they ain't no foundation, man. You know? That's the foolish man. <laughs> so when the winds came, when the hard times came, it's gone. And beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Yeah, man. So all these philosophies, all these other ways of life, when they fall, it's going to be a hard fall, man. You know? Do they still do that? Tell that story in school, um... The three little pigs. Puff and puff and blow the house down. Yeah, yeah. The house of straw, uh, the house of wood, wood and the house, the house of, of stone. concrete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Our half and our, yeah. yeah. Half and a puff and so that was from that um, that parable, that parable um, Sunday school. We yeah. should talk about that. Yeah, going I to that. About that. That's, yeah, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah. You know. And as I said earlier, when he when he says build a house upon a rock, there's already an established house that you got to be under, man. You know. Because when you when um, the Aosha said to the disciples, "Who do men say that I am?" and they were laughing and joking, man. No, ah, yeah, they say that um, you're Elijah and that. They said, "But who do you say that I am?" And they went from jokes to like, "Well, I don't know, you know." We just know because at the time they didn't know who he was. They just knew he was some great guy, man, and he he might be the Messiah, but it wasn't revealed to us, man. But then Peter, he said, "You, I, um, you are the." You were the, it says in here, you were the Christ, but you are Hamashiach, the anointed, the son of the living power, the son of the living God. And what did Yahweh Shai say unto him? Flesh and blood. See what I was saying earlier, man, the spirit, man. The things of the spirit are more powerful than the things of the flesh. Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but the, but the Father in heaven. All right? And his name was, um, um, uh, his name was Shemaiwan Bar, Yabana, Simon Bar Jonah, and he said, You are Peter, okay? Cephas or Kafar, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell, which is the bad times, because that's the adversary, his job is to give you hell. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it, man. You know? And we were talking about the whole seed and reincarnation earlier. Peter was David, man. You know? The man after the most size own heart. So that house, that rock, is the house of David, man. The elect, okay? So that's the house you've got to be a part of, man. That's the house we want to be a part of, man. Because when the winds come, which they're coming, they're starting, you know, and the rain's falling, which is starting to fall spiritually, okay? And the winds blow upon it and beat upon it, it shall stand firm, man, you know? The Hara is all of that number, man. It, it, there's a song by Billy Ocean. When the tough get going, uh, when the going gets tough, tough, the tough get going. Yeah. That's a parable actually in a song. Yeah, you know, man. Billy Ocean. Uh, what's it about? Isaiah 33 and 6. Yeah, get, get that and then we can go to Matthew. This is Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Yeah. And the strength of salvation. Yeah. The fear of the Lord Jehovah Isham Yahushai is his treasure. There you go, man. Wisdom. That be the stability of thy times, man. Okay, this that this knowledge, <coughs> wisdom, and understanding is what's going to keep us going, man. All these people out here, man, they're going to lose their 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 sanity, man. You know, it's going to be a, a become a thing of to hell with my nine to five, to hell with my family, it's survival mode, me by myself, man. And some people, their their mind, they can't take it, man. They're going to actually go crazy, man. You know. We would be a part of them too. But it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of right. their times. Man. Right. You know? Right. It's gonna become a thing where we're gonna stop preaching because the family of the word's gonna come and it's gonna be a thing of reflecting. Right. Yeah, we read about that. Yeah, we read about this, we read about that. And through the spirit, that's what's gonna comfort us, man. The words, because even these Bibles we got, 
we ain't gonna have these anymore, man. You know, it's gonna be solely a mental and a spiritual thing, man. You know, that's why we gonna have to trust in the spirit. You know. Anyways, man, go back to this map. No, no, we go to where um, in the verse 21 where it talks about of Joseph. Where, where how I came on the scene, basically. Matthew 1 and 21 And he stuck it And she shall bring forth a son And thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai For he shall save his people Actually, let's read up a couple of verses before just uh, Two verses are above Thank you Two verses above that it's Matthew 1 and 19 Then Joseph, her husband being a just man. Oh yeah, see, we missed it, man. We got caught, man. Yeah. Got off a couple of verses. Yeah. So, yeah. so Matthew one and sixteen, and jo jo like it. Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahweh Shai, who is called Hamashiach. We'll get the whole. Yeah. Yeah. One verse above. Yeah. Matthew one and fifteen, and Eliad begat Eli Eliezer. And Eliezer begat Mathan. Genealogy is gone. And Mathan begat Jacob. Yeah. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahweh Shai, who is called the Messiah. Yeah, the husband of Mary. Okay. And it says, of whom is born Yahweh Shai. Which means that Joseph went with Mary, okay, and after he got with Mary, she got pregnant, man. You see, people like, and that's the thing with the church. The church makes it seem like sex is a sin, or liking a woman is a sin. Oh, brother, you know, don't look at her because if she's nice and she's not married, what's the problem, man? You know? Same with, um, same with Joseph and Mary, man. Okay? Now, it was already set up that they were betrothed, which means they were engaged. I was watching the video of the brothers in Dallas, about the history of our Israelite culture of marriage you could be engaged or betrothed anywhere from six months to a year that means your parents as a man got with her parents and old Salakia you as the man would say listen dad you know I like that girl from oh, yeah. that family yeah, yeah. and then your dad would be like okay you want to take a wife cool let's go and speak to her parents then her parents yeah, because yeah. you see the woman is the liability in a situation oh. a woman the father needs to know and that's in the scriptures too, in the Apocrypha, that a father, will, um, his, he, will, he will lose sleep for his daughter because of who she marries. Otherwise, she will become a whore. Right? Because if you didn't get married as a woman and you got a bad husband and you got relegated, you'd go to the profession of um, being a prostitute. So that's what a father, that's the worst nightmare you can have for your daughter. So what would happen is, you would go to the, um, the father of the daughter, the parents, and that boy, that young man, would have to basically prove himself. Well, I've got a job, and that's the law. You know, when a man becomes 12, his father will send him off, he gets his substance worth for 12 years. This is what I've got, okay? I can take care of your daughter. I'm a, I come from a good family. This is my father, the son of whoever, the son of whoever, and I am his son, okay? I like your daughter. We're both Israelites. Can I get to know her? When you get the father's blessing, all right, and the mother, but really the father's blessing, they would set it up where, okay, you two can speak in our betrothed, you're engaged, and we're going to set it up that after some time, you get married, okay? That's what happened with yeah. um, Mary and Joseph. Yeah. All right, now read that last verse again, about um, where you left off. And, uh, yeah. Matthew 1 and 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, yeah. the husband of Mary, yeah. of whom was born Yahweh Shai. Right, so there you go. They, what, what happened was, is that he was to be the husband of Mary, meaning that they were engaged already. Okay, but what happened was, and they say, the scholars say Mary was kind of young, but he would have been a little bit older, as, that's our custom. She was fine, okay, they got to a point where with them two alone, and they couldn't wait for the ceremony. Because the marriage ceremony is that there's a big feast and that feast we go on for seven days. You have a, the outer chamber where there's a party. Everybody wears their wedding costumes. Yeah. Okay, there's a party, there's a big cook-up feast. feast. Yeah, yeah. 
dancing music, okay? And then the, the two uh, engaged would come before the people and then they would, behind the, the feast ceremony area, there'd be a chamber. And how it was, is that the, the, the parents of the girl would prepare the chamber. Meaning they would prepare the bed, they would prepare the sheets and everything. Okay, and then at some point in the feast, the, the man and the woman would go into that chamber and he would have sex with her, okay? And if you get into the technicalities of the word, you can only have sex once, because the word sex means to cut, okay? Yeah. Meaning he would cut her, her hymen and they would have sex. And that is the consummation of the marriage in the eyesight of the Heavenly Father. Now what would happen is that she would bleed on that, on that cloth. Now, after she bled on the cloth, they would come out on a balcony and wave the cloth. It would probably be a white cloth and it would have blood all yeah, over it. Yeah, it's a white cloth. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about virginity. Yeah. And they would wave the cloth and the people would start dancing and clapping and joyous even more. Because now they're married in the eyesight of the Heavenly Father and it proved that she was a virgin. Okay? And what would happen is the, the woman's parents would keep that cloth in the law. So they would know that, yeah, this is the, this is the guarantee. Our daughter was a virgin given <coughs> unto this man to be joined unto him. Now the reason why Joseph... Now let's keep reading actually because it, it talks about it. So, uh, who is called a Mashiach? So, verse, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are, are 14 generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Amashiach are 14 generations. Is that numerology gone? Now the birth of Yahweh Shai was on the wise. It's like on this wise. Meaning this is how it went down. Go on. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Engaged. Before they came together. Yeah, meaning before they came together, as in before they were officially married together. That means they didn't have the, the whole wedding ceremony. Go on. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Right. So that means she was found with child before they came. So they didn't have the wedding ceremony, but she was found with child. Meaning that before they got to this ceremony, Joseph couldn't wait. They couldn't wait. All right. Let's just be honest, man. Israelites, it's within our spirit to, to, to we like sex and we like to, we like to um, progenerate, man. She was young and he was young. Exactly. He, he, they're burning, man. <laughs> the, the scholars say he was around 30, so he's, yeah. he's still, that's young. That's and young. they say that she was around 15, 14, yeah, 15. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So Mary, man, she was in her prime. She was a fine ass Israelite woman, man. Okay. She had all the curves and stuff. And Joseph was like, mm. you know, and he couldn't wait. So what happened was, he had sex with her. So she was a virgin and she, he, he took her virginity. What that meant was, is that now at the ceremony, he couldn't do the part of waving the cloth. And he can't, he can't, you know how Jake is, man. Jake is proud, oh, so what? At the big ceremony now, they can't do that. That's embarrassing. There's gonna be a family uproar. That's why I say Joseph was a just man. Okay, go on. Then Joseph, the husband, being a just man. Exactly, meaning he was he was an upright, righteous man. But the word just means to be righteous, all right? He understood, he, he was seen forward that this ain't gonna work out. I've already put my woman, she's now mine, but this ain't gonna work out. It's gonna be a shame unto her. Right. Okay, go on, get that. This is uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 13. If any man take a, take a wife, and go in unto her and hate her. Verse 14, and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Cause you got, so like, you got, so you got some messed up Jake, man, that they'll, they'll take the woman. She was a virgin, but then now they just don't like the wife, you know? And then they want to start lying. No, you can't do that. That's unrighteous, man. So this is the law of the God. When, verse 15, then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the dam damsel's virginity yeah. unto the elders of the city in the gate. Yeah, that, that proves, so when you, when, you, when you had the wedding ceremony, after, the, after they waved the cloth, that cloth would go to the parents or the father. 
okay? And they would keep that as a security, knowing that, yes, this daughter of ours was a virgin, all right? So if the man tries to act up and talk shit and say, oh, well, she wasn't a virgin, or I don't, no, this is the proof. So basically, if Joseph and Mary would go ahead with the ceremony, the, the wedding ceremony, the parents would not have heard that are talking about virginity. They will go, they will lie together, but there won't be, there won't be anything there, there won't be any blood or anything. So the parents will not prove that their daughter was still a virgin. Why? Because Joseph has already laid with her way before the wedding. And the scripture says Joseph was a just man. He wasn't going to shame her like that because he knew it was him that took it anyway. So that's why, you know, he, he said what he done was, instead of going ahead with the wedding, he just took her away and took her somewhere else and hid her. And according to the law, when you're, when you're betrothed, if you violate, even though you're not fully married, even though if you violate marriage laws, then you, you are worthy of the death of marriage laws. So them being betrothed, that would have looked like she went around and did something else. Yeah, that was a big deal yeah. in Israel, man. That means he knew that basically she was going to be put to death, man. Yeah. You know? So he, he was like, no, 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 because I know I took her, but they wouldn't believe that. They need the evidence. So he went and hid her, man. Yeah. Finish on that. If I may, it was a big deal, man. It was a very big deal because basically, if they found you to be a virgin, I like today, that brought shame on your whole family, man. You see, like how the Muslims do it, you know? They find, oh, she's not a virgin. The, the whole family will get uh, disowned and everything. You get kicked out, disowned. If you're in their own country, they will behead you, man. You see? I think this is the appropriate way to the That's the, that's the, that's the, um, what do you call it? That basically, that means if a daughter shames her, her family like that, her mom didn't teach her right, her dad didn't teach her right, what kind of family do you come from? You know, uh, you don't, you have no, no, no morals about you, you know? But that's gonna be like, take the hell out of this house, man. Right. You know? Because all of, all he's worked for, his offspring, his children, and now you, his daughter, all right, is gonna go and shame his whole household? That's a big thing, you know? Verse 16, And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. Verse 17, And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, So like, and if, if, if you were found lying as the man, you would get messed up, man. They would actually beat you up. It's in the law. Go on. Saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Verse 18, and the elders of the, that city shall take that man and chastise him. Yeah, meaning that if the man was found to lie, if the parents said, well, this is the cloth, there you go. All right. And the man was found to lie, they, they would, they would beat him up, man. Take the chips up and keep the cup. Yeah, the, 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 the elders of the city. Oh, yeah, you took The elders of the city would um would beat him up, man. They would beat him. They'll punch him up, all right? Because how the hell are you gonna lie? How are you gonna lie on a on a on your wife, man? And then try and bring shame to her family. That's some messed up shit, man. So the elders would chastise him, meaning they would beat him up, and that's his punishment, man. Because you're trying to bring shame onto your wife and the family she came from. Go on. Verse 19, and they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver. Yeah, so after, after, because already, even, let's say he was found to be light. That's already still a big, as the, um, Jake say, that's a wahala, man. That's a big problem. You already you really shamed the family in front of the whole congregation, man. Because you're now trying to lie on the family. So you're going to have to be beaten up, and then you're going to have to pay a hundred um, shekels, man. Or, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he had brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. There you go, so he's already... She, she